Okay, we're back at the home of Crybaby Performance. We're doing tech on a UT3. Um, I know a lot of people are asking us questions about UT1s and UT2s. If you're gonna be competitive, you need a UT3. I know they're hard to get right now. Um, a UT2 will keep up, but it, it's gonna be hard to win with one, especially with this new rule. Uh, we went from 17 degrees timing to 20.5. Okay, so we're gonna do um, cam timing, but before that, I wanted to show you guys how to freshen up your valve job um, by the book, um, which it says um, you can't machine anything, you can just lap valves. So here I have this um, grinding and lapping compound coarse for roughing, okay? So this is pretty coarse, and when you hear it, you know, it's, it's a thicker paste that, you know, it looks like it has beach sand in it. You know, that's how thick it is, but what happened to my rag? And um, so that's pretty coarse. And then I have this micro um, lapping compound, which is 600 grit. So I'm going to finish it off with that. So what I do, you can see the little line on the valve. <clears throat> and the line looks pretty consistent like this is not not too bad okay and then you can look at the valve seat itself sometimes you'll see a dark area on there and that means that the valve is not completely sealing against that like here's a dark area right here I don't know if we can we get that on the camera mm -hmm. let me see something point wiggling all around but it looks a little darker right there there which would mean that the valve is not seating in that area as tight as it could so what we're going to do is i like to take the valve and just dip it on the side just a little bit and move the compound around it's going to go all the way around anyway because we're going to spin it in there And then I don't want to contaminate the whole damn engine with this stuff because it's gritty sand, you know. Put this in the drill. And I don't know if you can hear this, but you can hear that sand. It's, it's got some grit to it. And then I put my suction cup on there with my drill, I gotta set it down. It, when they seal real good, it won't spin unless you touch the back side of the valve to get it off the seat. It's hard to do this on a video because okay, so you get the idea. Now I gotta do it with the way I normally do it. You can hear it grinding away. It takes off ever so little amount. And what I'm doing is on the back side, I'm holding my finger on the valve stem because it once it once it locks in there it's going to grip pretty hard so I'm bouncing it on and off to get that to um to rotate now that's probably good then I'm going to wipe it off and I can see it made that line dark um, dark gray, which that's what normally happens. It makes it dark gray. Um, cause you've been, in fact, you've sanded that area against the valve seat. And you can see on the valve seat, it's shiny and consistent. The whole the whole um, valve seat. 
And that's what you want. Now after I did the rougher compound, now I'm going to go to the 600 grit compound, which really isn't necessary if you don't go crazy, but And you don't want to get the compound on this shaft because you'll be wearing it into the guide. So you only want so ever little bit. If you're the guy that eats and gets pizza sauce all over the front of your shirt, you want to be careful on this part. You don't want it all over everything in there. Now this compound, you won't even hear it. It's so fine. And again, I bought that from NR Racing. If you call over there, tell them that James from Crybaby sent you. You might work a 10% discount out of them. Okay. Now we're going to wipe that compound off that valve, and man is that pretty. It's like making jewelry to an engine guy. Okay, so now you can see that valve, how nice it is. It's nice and gray all the way around. It's got a good sealing surface all the way around. <clears throat> Now if we look at the seat, the valve seat is nice and shiny gray and smooth all the way around. Now if you, you would see if you had a low spot, it'd still be dark, but usually it only takes that little bit. And we'll do the exhaust valve real quick. The exhaust valve is really the valve you want to do. The intake valve doesn't get real hot and everything, but the exhaust valve gets really hot and sometimes they can warp a little bit and get carbon in there. So we're gonna do that one real quick here. Well, let's stick it in the drawer. It'll take a second. I gotta keep it moving. They're not going to lap your valves for you in tech either. No, in tech they're not going to lap your valves. But this is something that you guys should I'm know how to do. I'm trying to give you some tips because of, uh, we were doing this every three to four races to keep our motors as fresh as we could keep them. I should say engine. And it did make a difference. Mid-season everybody else will be falling off. You start lapping your valves, you'll be strong all season long. This is one of the biggest things in rebuilding this engine, especially the exhaust valve. If you don't want to take the time to do both, do the exhaust valve. That's the important one. You got to have the head off. It takes. You can get the head gasket from an R racing seat belt as well. Yeah. Now you can see on that valve. It made the gray area all around. It's a little harder to see because the valve is darker in color. And you can keep going until you think it's perfect. You know, if the line thins out or gets um, too thin, just do it again. It's not, you know, just don't grind it in there. Just do it nice and easy. Okay, we're going to skip the second part because we want to move on with life. Okay. So We're we'll, on to piston, piston pop-up and then valve timing. Here, take that away. I bought the lapping compound in the NR Racing. Where did you get the tool that goes to the drill? NR Racing. 
The tool for the for that came from NR Racing. All that came from NR Racing. They're great over there. Okay, so now we're gonna check piston pop-up and in the manual, John find it because it says to this little round pad right here. Somebody give me a page number, please. And it says that you can scrape the carbon off of there because that carbon's worth, you know, something. Now there's a round little divot in here. It's not to that part. And then there's a little point right here, and it's not to that part. It's to the center of the piston, to that machine surface. You want to be able to see what's there. Now we have our tool here that I'm working backwards on. It's from one of those places. Okay, so here's the tool and we're What we're doing is we're zeroing out the tool to the top of the deck Okay, so we're allowed I found it page 22 for you guys that are following along inspect and measure piston to cylinder head uh, cylinder block deck clearance uh, Make sure the pistons at TDC which we know and then it, you're allowed zero, or, or in the new rules, minus 1,000. Or plus one. Or plus one. Okay, so we want to zero out the tool. And so this sits flat on the deck, and then we have our gauge right here. And how we zero it out is we move that to zero. And tighten the little Healy bob. Zero. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate that to the top of the piston. And then we're going to rotate the engine and we are, we're good, but I rather be better, but we're good. What are we at? Seven thousandths. So we're seven thousandths below. Let me see if I can get. Every time you move it, you got to go back to the zero. And adjust it. I'm trying to give you guys a better camera angle. Now, when I rotate this, See how it goes up, and then it wants to start going back the other way. So it won't actually go to zero because the piston's not at zero. You could machine this block another five, six, seven, seven thousand. So you could take another seven thousandths off the block. But what's the thickness of the head gasket? Six thousand. So eight thousand. Oh, eight thousand. So it's about the, the amount of the head gasket. You could so the thing is, the piston has a radius on the edge of it, um, <clears throat> so it can never hit the head gasket at zero. Because some people think, well, I'll hit the head or I'll hit the gasket. No, the gasket has 11 thousandths. That piston's never going to grow when it heats up that much to touch anything. So zero is the number. That's where I'd like to be at, or minus one. So that's an easy check on piston pop-up. All right, that concludes piston pop-up. Uh, we're on to valve timing, the biggest power gain cam, ever. Cam timing. Cam timing, cam timing, cam timing. valve timing, cam, you know. I mean, if we milled 50 thousandths off this, that, that would be a big power gain, but you can't do that. Let's just cut for 10 seconds so I can break We're this. We're going to put the flywheel on and get the degree wheel 
on there. And then we'll come back when we're um, more set up, but we'll show you how to do it when we come back. Give us a couple minutes. There's a degree. Yeah. 